we're going to read Tudor Pepper Day chapters 8 and 9. Punishment. First of all, Aunt Sally, nobody takes a punishment of mine sitting down. Stand up. Tudor stood up. Okay, now, this, Aunt Sally swept her arm about, is the honey house. I don't see any honey, said Tudor. It's because it ain't here, said Aunt Sally. It's out yonder in the hives. The bees are making it. I'll be collecting it in here later this summer. She nodded to the doorway. Let's go see the great outdoors. Outside the honey house was a grassy hill. The slope of the hill was fenced in. In the field, a single animal grazed. Aunt Sally pointed. What is it? Tudor had seen this beast before. It was black and white and had four legs. There was a bag-like thing hanging beneath it. She was pretty sure the bag-like thing was an udder. What animal do you think it is? The problem was, as far as she knew, only cows had udders. The thing was not a cow. At least she didn't think so. It's an animal, Tudor stated firmly. You're cooking, said Aunt Sally. Tell me more. Tudor took a deep breath. It's not a cow. Aunt Sally slapped her on the back. Good girl. That there critter is not a cow. Never was. But that is an udder there, isn't it? Said Tudor. Aunt Sally nodded. Bingo, that there is one fine, upstanding, all-American, grade A udder. So tell me, she leaned into Tudor's face, what's that udder hanging on to? Tudor frowned. This isn't school. It's summer vacation. I'm not supposed to have a test. Aunt Sally moved in, pressed her finger to the end of Tudor's nose. This is not a test. This is a punishment. And you're stalling. Answer. Tudor squealed and stomped her foot and knew that she was out of time. She took a wild guess. A moose? Aunt Sally seemed about to laugh and then was hugging Tudor tightly and stroking her hair. She was saying as if to a baby or a puppy, You poor creature. Don't you know the difference between a moose and a goat? What did that awful town place do to you? Tudor felt like she could take a nap right there snuggled up against her aunt. Sometimes it was hard to remember that she hated this place. It's a goat, she said. Yes, ma'am, that there is one goat. Goats have udders too? Goats have udders too. Do they make milk too? Like the old saying goes, said Aunt Sally, where there's an udder, there's milk. What a, ter a terrible thought began to wriggle into Tudor's brain. She backed away. She stared at her aunt. I drink milk every day. Aunt Sally nodded. I believe you do. And you're telling me the milk I drink? I drink comes from, she pointed at the goat. That? Aunt Sally answered cheerily. That's why it's called goat's milk. Tudor's tongue shot out as if trying to escape her mouth. She gagged. She stepped backward. She felt something mushy under her foot. She looked down at her sneaker. She looked up at Aunt Sally. Tudor howled. She scrubbed her sneaker into the ground. She howled again and bolted for the house. Chapter 9. I love the title of this chapter. It is hysterical. Poop! Mrs. Pepperday was waiting at the back door. Punishment over so soon? Goat's milk. Goat poop. Tudor squawked. I'm not being punished. I'm being tortured. Mrs. Pepperday held out a small white plastic bag. Well, this isn't torture, she said. This is a chore. Empty this bag in the compost heap. 
Two to check the bag. Compost heap? What is that? Ask Aunt Sally, her mother replied. She went inside. Tudor asked Aunt Sally. Her aunt led her around the house to the vegetable garden. She pointed to a wire fence in the shape of a circle. The fence was as tall as Tudor. Inside was a pile of dark brown, oily, gloppy, gunky stuff. It's supposed to smell, said Aunt Sally. It's rotting. What is it? Tudor honked through her pinched nose. More poop? That was one way of thinking of it, Aunt said Aunt Sally. I guess you could call it plant poop. Why don't you open the bag there and dump her in? Tudor opened the bag. Inside, she could see the remains of breakfast, coffee grounds, grapefruit rinds, eggshells. Her nose wrinkled. Garbage? Compost, said Aunt Sally. Garbage, said Tudor. Don't you even have garbage trucks out here? Sure, said Aunt Sally, but this stuff is too good for garbage. Dump her in. Tudor held the bag upside down over the fence and let the contents fall on the heap. Then she backed up till she could no longer smell it. This is the grossest, most disgusting thing I ever saw. Aunt Sally grinned. The better to grow your tomatoes with, my dear. Tudor stared. What are you talking about? Aunt Sally reached over the wire fence and scooped up a handful of compost. Three fat worms fell out. Leaves, grass clippings, leftovers, that's what goes in. After half a year, this is what comes out. Best seed food in the world. This is what we plant our tomatoes in and our lettuce and cucumbers and beans and peas and carrots and everything you see in this here garden. Tudor looked at the garden. She was turning green. You mean the food I've been eating grew up in that, that, like this old saying goes, chirped Aunt Sally, rotten earth makes sweet pea. She tossed the handful back onto the heap. Tudor was getting woozy. Come on, said Aunt Sally. We'll go see the rest of the farm. Tudor groaned. She flopped to the ground. I can't take any more. I'm going to barf. Aunt Sally smiled gently. She thought for a moment. All right, just two more things, not punishment. You can do them by yourself when you feel ready, okay? Tudor grunted. Aunt Sally nodded. Okay, these are the two little things you might never notice on your own. They'll show you there's more to the farm than meets the eye, she chuckled, or the nose. Aunt Sally knelt down beside a group of white top plants. First thing, these are called Queen Anne's Lace, she said. Someday I want you to look real close at one and see what you find in the middle, okay? Tudor grunted. Aunt Sally walked over to a small group of trees and shrubs. Second thing, see these plants with leaves that look like mittens? Tudor grunted. The leaves did look like mittens. They're called sassafras, said Aunt Sally. Someday I want you to pull up one of the, those plants and smell the root. What is it? sniffed Tudor. A poop root? Aunt Sally laughed. You'll find out. At dinner that evening, Tudor would not eat any vegetables or drink her milk. Why does everything on a farm have to smell bad, she grumped. Everywhere you go, poop here, poop there. I'll bet the bees are even flying over and pooping in our hair. Chucky laughed. Tudor went on talking about poop. Bee poop, goat poop, pig poop, chicken poop. Finally, Mrs. Pepperday slammed down her fork. You've said the word poop 22 times, said Mrs. Pepperday. Poop, 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 said Tudor. That's 27. If you say that word one more time, said Mrs. Pepperday, you may leave the table and go outside to smell the farm some more. Poop, Tudor said. Chucky cracked up. Miss Pepperday pointed to the door. Tudor left the room. Did you turn the egg today? Mrs. Pepperday called. Yes, Tudor said, called back and was gone. Ten minutes later, Aunt Sally looked out the window and broke out laughing. She waved, come here, you gotta see this. Everyone went to the window. 
There was Tudor in the barnyard. She was wearing Aunt Sally's straw hat on her head and a clothespin on her nose. She was running back and forth with a can of air freshener. She was spraying the farm. And that is the end of chapter nine, eight and nine. Thanks, you guys. I'll see you again later.